Hello and welcome back to my Bash scripting course. In the previous video, I gave you guys an overview of what you can expect in this course. And in this video, we're actually going to get started. More specifically in this video, what we're going to do is write the traditional hello world script. And then in each episode from here on out, it's going to get more and more advanced as we dive into the world of Bash scripting. So without any further delay, let's just go ahead and dive in and get started. In this episode, we're going to run through some basics to get us started, and during this video, we'll be creating several scripts. These particular scripts won't be all that useful in practice, but they will serve as examples to get us going, and well, we have to start somewhere, right? Now, first of all, what exactly is Bash? It's important that we understand what Bash is because, well, that's what we're going to be using throughout the series. Bash is what we refer to in the industry as a shell. Anytime we open up a terminal on a Linux or a Unix system and we enter commands, we're interacting with a shell. The shell allows us to enter commands and then it presents us with the results of those commands as output. As you can see, I have a terminal open in front of me right now, so let's go ahead and see this in action. So what I've done is I've just executed the ls command, and as I'm sure at least half of you know already, ls stands for list storage, and it lists the storage of our current working directory. Now the ls command isn't what we're going over right now, but what we've seen is an example of entering a command and then we were able to see the output of that command right here in our terminal. And that's exactly what a shell allows us to do. A shell allows us to work with a system via commands, as you can see here, and there's going to be a ton of commands as administrators that we're going to want to use. And that's where automation comes in because, well, we probably don't want to execute the same exact commands in sequence over and over and over again. It would be really nice if we could automate those commands. Well, we can. That's why this particular series exists. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you how to do in this series. So what I've done is I've just entered the ls command, which is short for list storage. I typed ls and then I pressed enter. The shell recognized ls as a valid command and carried out the instruction. In this case, the ls command lists the contents of my current working directory, which is exactly what it did. Now, if I was to enter an incorrect command, for example, maybe I misspell ls, then I'm going to see an error message rather than results. So therefore, in order to interact with a computer or server via a shell, I have to enter commands that that shell recognizes. And using the command line, I could do, well, anything I want. The command line is very powerful. There's a reason why a lot of people still use it to this day, because we can manage our entire servers via commands. For example, I can go into the Etsy directory. I can list the storage there. And then I can go back to my home directory. Maybe I could even run a command to install a special program, reboot the server. There's all kinds of different things that we can do via the shell. And that's exactly where automation comes in. With a script, we can actually include commands that we run every now and then to automate processes and make everything that much easier for ourselves. Now on Linux and Unix systems, there are different shells available. On most Linux systems nowadays, the default shell is Bash. And if you're not sure which shell you're actually using, it's very easy to find out. You simply type echo and then dollar sign. And after that, you type the word shell in all caps. And when I press enter, what it's going to do is it's going to tell me which shell I'm actually using within this terminal window. And big surprise, I'm using Bash. That makes sense. This is a Bash tutorial series, and I'm using Bash as you can see right here. Depending on which distribution of Linux you're using, or whether you are using some sort of application on Windows that allows you to enter commands, maybe the terminal on Mac OS, you might not be using bin bash like I am right here. Maybe you're using something like ZSH. And that's a perfectly valid shell as well, but that's not what we're going over in this video. We need to be running bash. That's what we're going to be writing our automation scripts in. So we want to make sure that we're actually using bash. Now, if I wasn't already running bash, what I could do is type which and then bash. And what that'll do is tell me what I need to enter in the command line to start using bash. So in this case, maybe I'll start typing user bin bash just like that. I'll press enter and now I'm using bash. I'm already using bash, so I'm not going to press enter. But if you're not using bash on your end, you should be able to type which bash. And then you'll see where your bash interpreter is actually located. And then you simply run it. 
and then you can confirm by running echo shell again and make sure that it says that you're running bash. Okay, so now we know what bash is, but what exactly is a bash script? Well, in general, a script is essentially a text file that has one or more commands written inside. When executed, the commands within the text file are entered just as if you entered them in yourself. For example, you saw me use the ls command a few times now. And again, it just shows you the contents of your current working directory, like you see here. But how do I actually turn that command into a script? Well, what I'm going to do is show you that right now. I use nano, and that's just the text editor that I'm going to be using. It doesn't matter which text editor you actually use. But what I'm going to do is call my script, myscript.sh, just like that. And now we have an empty text file. So what I'm going to do is simply type ls, just like I did on the command line, and I'll save the file. In the case of nano, if that's what you're using like I am, you hold control and press O, and that'll show you a prompt like you see here asking you what the file name is going to be or what file name you want to save the file as. We already entered that in as myscript.sh. It defaults to that right here, so I'll press enter. And then to exit out, we hold control and press X, and now we have a script. It's right here. So I might be thinking, well, why is that special? It's just a text file and I typed ls inside of it. Well, to be fair, the examples that we're going to be going over early in the series are not going to be all that useful, but just follow along with me because it'll absolutely make sure that you understand in particular what we're doing. Now to execute the script, what I need to do first is mark it executable. And to do that, what I will do is type chmod, the chmod command, very typical in Linux. And what this is going to allow me to do is change the permissions of the file. And I'm not going to go into permissions in this video, but specifically what we want to do is edit the execute bit, which is going to enable us to execute the text file as if it was a program, basically a script. And I called it myscript.sh. And I will need sudo or root privileges in order to do this. So I started my command with sudo. If you're logged in as root, you won't need to do that but this command right here should actually mark it executable. So I'll type in my super secret password. And well, I don't see any output, but I also don't see any errors either. So let's list the storage. And in my case, my script is now shown in green. And that is very common when you mark a script as executable. It'll change the color to green when you list the storage. Now, whether or not yours will show up as green depends on your distribution. Not every distribution of Linux will actually show executable files in green. In my case, I'm running a variation of Ubuntu here, and by default, it does show executable files in green. But to know for sure, we could type ls-l, and that shows us the contents of our working directory again, but it shows us a long listing, and we have our script file right here. It is executable because we have the x bit right here, and again, the permission string is outside the scope of this entire course. On the YouTube channel, I do have videos that goes over this. So if you want to learn more, there's videos you can watch for free over there that'll more than explain it. But for the purposes of this lesson, we want to make sure that the script is executable. And now it is. We see the X bit is there. So how exactly do we run this script? Well, since the script is right here in my current working directory, all I have to do is type dot forward slash and then the name of the script just like that, and it's going to execute it. But what it did was it showed the contents of my current working directory. And the reason why it did that, as you probably already know, is because inside the text file, I have ls. That's a valid command. And when I executed the script, it ran ls. Now the problem here, it's going to take me a lot more time to type this right here to run the script than it would take me to simply type ls. So therefore, writing scripts isn't always the best solution. Scripts are great when they save you time, but if they create more work, then that, well, defeats the purpose. But this is just an introductory video. Our examples are going to get more complex as we go along, so we'll just roll with this for now. Now there's a couple things that I want to note here. First of all, with our script, I named it with .sh, as you see here. That is not required. You don't actually have to include .sh in the name. It is standard practice. You'll see this a lot where when someone creates a bash script, they will often rename it with a .sh extension. But you will also see bash scripts that don't have an extension at all. Maybe in this case, it might be my script with nothing after it. 
So if it doesn't have .sh in the name, then how do you know if it's a bash script or not? We'll get into that. Just for now, understand that the name doesn't really matter. You can call it whatever you want. You can call it myscript.sh, myscript, script, potato, pizza, Garfield the cat, whatever you want to name your script, it doesn't matter. You name it what you want to name it. You mark it executable. And as long as there are valid commands inside the script, it'll run. Now to continue, let's open up the script again. And what I'm going to do is add another line to this script. I'll just go here to the bottom and I will type PWD. That's a valid command on a Linux system. So this command should also be recognized. And what happens generally speaking when you run a script is that the interpreter, in this case bash, will start at the very first line and then work its way down. Now before we only had one line, we had ls, so there was nothing else for it to do. Now we have pwd at the end, so what should happen is it should run the commands sequentially in the order that they're typed, starting again with the top, so it should run ls, and then the script should run the pwd command. So let's save it. We'll exit out. So let's run the script again and see how the output has changed. So just like before, it's giving us a listing of files as you can see right here. No surprise there. Next, it's showing me my current working directory and that's exactly what the pwd command does. It shows us the directory that we're currently inside of. Now again, this script is completely useless. You would never run a script that simply has ls and then pwd. It's very unlikely that would add any actual value. But again, we're just learning and we'll get into some awesome examples coming very soon. But hopefully you see the value of scripting immediately. Think of a situation where you have to run a bunch of commands to carry out a task. If there's just two commands, the script may not be all that useful. But what if there's 200 commands in there? Do you actually want to type all 200 commands one after another? I doubt it. That's why we have scripts. We could put all of the commands in one file and then it carries them out one after another. As we go along, there's going to be branching, you know, like if statements and things like that, where we can control the script and the execution. It's going to get more advanced, but as you can see here, there's actual value with scripting because again, if you have a bunch of things that you need to do, you could enter each of those commands into a text file, mark it executable and run it, and effectively you have a script. So now what I'm going to do is show you how to properly write a bash script. Here's our script again, and we have these two commands, but typically this is not how a bash script is structured. Earlier in the video, I posed the question, if the file is not named with .sh, how do you know it's a bash script? Well, now I'm going to let you know exactly how you tell the difference. If it's a proper script, a bash script, what we're going to do is type something very specific as the first line, and we're going to do this for every script that we're going to write in this course going forward. So I'll type it out and then I'll explain it. So here I've typed what's called a shebang. Could be called a hash bang, there's other names for it. But what a shebang is, is the very first line of any script that tells the script which interpreter the script is supposed to use. What makes this great is that even if your shell is not bash, maybe you're using fish, zsh, or something like that, then this script will still execute under bash. And the reason why this script will always execute under bash is because we are calling out bash right here. Now normally a pound symbol, like we have right here, would be a comment. We'll get into comments later, but the first line is not considered a comment. This is actually telling the system which interpreter is intended to run the script. So if a bash script is written properly, it's going to have a line like this as the first line. So therefore, even if we don't have a .sh extension, we could be reasonably sure that this is in fact a bash script. I mean, it even says bash right here. So I'll just erase all of this and give you another example. The name of this specific lesson is Hello World. And it's very common in any programming language or scripting course to write a simple Hello World example. And I really don't want to go against the culture, so let's just go ahead and do that. What I'm going to do is type echo, and then in quotes, I'm going to type Hello World. Just like that. I'll save the file. I'll exit out. We still have our script right there. Even though I've edited the script, it's still executable. Editing a script does not remove the execute bit. So what I should be able to do is simply run it. 
just like that, and it prints Hello World. So now that we've actually included the shebang at the top of the script, and then we carried out an instruction after that, we have our first official actual bash script right here that's written the proper way. We want to make sure that we have bin bash right after the pound and exclamation mark right here, just like you see. And then we have our actual commands going down like you see here. I only have one, but again, we're going to get more complex as we go along. And in fact, what I'm going to do is add one more line to this script before I close out this particular lesson. So now what I'm doing is I'm including PWD in the script. We've gone over PWD earlier in this lesson. So if I go ahead and execute this script right here, it now says hello world and then my current working directory is, and then it gives me the results of the PWD command. So I'll bring up the script. And as you can see right here, we have a few different instructions, echo hello world. And then it's going to echo this sentence right here. We have the sentence in double quotes, that's very typical. And then we have the command PWD by itself. We just want to simply show the current working directory. So I simply put PWD right there, just like that. Like I said, this is a very simple script, but I think it's more than adequate to get us started. And congratulations, you have just written your first bash script, assuming you haven't done that before. If you haven't, well, now you have. So there you go. And that's the end of this particular video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are enjoying this particular series so far, then what I'd like you to do is click that like button. That lets YouTube know that we need more training and tutorials just like this on YouTube. That would be awesome. In the meantime though, thank you so much for watching this particular episode and I'll see you again very soon.